let's slide right in here at number 10 with Madonna. Madame Madonna is one of the biggest divas around. She's particularly difficult to work for because she's such a perfectionist. For one, she hates germs and doesn't want them to be anywhere near her. Before her concert in France, for example, Madonna had all the toilets, showers, and sinks removed, scrubbed down, and then reinstalled. <laughs> Madonna also reportedly has a food intake assistant whose job it is to monitor everything that Madonna puts in her mouth. Madonna's actually admitted to having a food assistant in an interview with The Mirror. She said, I call her the food police. Are you eating? Did you drink enough water? So basically this person's job is to allow Madonna to get mad at them whenever she eats because she doesn't want to eat. How is that normal? What the fuck? <laughs> Madonna, I love you, but how does that make any sense? <laughs> Number nine on our list, we have Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande apparently likes to be carried. It helps that she's very small, but whenever she doesn't feel like walking, she wants to be carried like a baby. She will ask her assistants to pick her up so that her feet aren't hitting the floor. So I gotta admit, this one seemed like a little bit crazy, but Ariana's actually confirmed the fact that she likes to be carried in an Instagram post, a couple of Instagram posts. Caption, Post show ritual when my feet are broken and long shoot yesterday. Couldn't walk or keep my eyes open by the time we finished. There's also a ton of pictures of Ariana Grande being carried all over the internet. She's not being carried on the internet. She's, the pictures, shut up. Although it is one of my fantasies to be carried everywhere by men like an Egyptian queen. <laughs> I can't imagine actually demanding it of people. Is this what fame does? Does anyone know? I feel like that's what happens. You just feel like you have the right to be carried everywhere. <laughs> At number eight on our list, we have Sarah Jessica Parker. Sex in the City star and fashion icon Sarah Jessica Parker is reportedly a little bit quirky. Leaked emails reveal just how quirky. According to former staffer Michelle Collins, she instructs staff to fill a tiny 1.5 ounce container of Vaseline for her kids. The cutlery used to fill the Vaseline has to be hand washed using a paper towel and then it has to go through the dishwasher. Her son's bottle of face wash and body wash must be always replenished. Staff can't buy multiples of products. They must monitor the products until the product runs out and then replace that product immediately. Also, apparently Jessica practices witchcraft, which is like, Kind of no surprise. Hocus pocus, anybody? At number seven, we have Demi Moore. Demi Moore loves some good lighting. Girl, same. But her obsession with good lighting is a bit more severe than most of us. Demi Moore reportedly can't look at herself in the mirror unless the lighting is perfect. An assistant revealed amber bulbs are the order of the day at Demi's house. She believes softer light is more flattering and has cases of bulbs in her home in case the bulbs ever get discontinued. <laughs> uh. Number six on our list, we have Frank Sinatra. I love me some Frank Sinatra. Damn. Mm. But the legendary jazz singer has some pretty interesting quirks. So you know Sinatra's hat? Yeah, that was apparently there to cover up his bald spot. Talk about hat fishing. Am I right, ladies? <laughs> if you don't know what hat fishing is, it's this thing where like guys will have a bald spot and they'll wear a hat to cover it up and then they'll take the hat off and you're like, whoa, I didn't know you were bald. <laughs> I know it's mean, but it's something that happens. You know, I'd like to know. I'd like to know in advance. <laughs> in his memoir, Mr. S, My Life with Frank Sinatra, his butler, back then stars had butlers, not personal assistants, George Jacobs revealed he had to spray cover up on his boss's bald patch every single day. <laughs> spray my hands so they can't see my bald spot. Yes, Sinatra, anything for you, Sinatra. <laughs> one for my bald spot and one more for the road. George would also have to pay for the nighttime lady visitors who would come by Sinatra's place. You'd think he wouldn't have to pay for that sort of thing. Also, apparently Sinatra wore the specially made underwear designed to hold his impressive package. And this underwear, George would have to go pick up and find whenever he was at events. Halfway there at number five, we have Jessica Simpson. Jessica and her assistant, Casey Cobb, seem like best friend goals. But before Cobb, Jessica went through a ton of personal assistants. One of them only lasted two weeks because, quote, she was too smart to work for Jessica. Many of her assistants hated working for her. One source told the star that Jessica Simpson would dine and dash, as in she wouldn't pay the bill when she went out to restaurants or bars. The assistant claims that Jessica thought her stardom was payment enough. Jessica also reportedly drops her hair extensions all over the place to the point where it looks like animals have been shedding all over the house. <laughs> oh, I'm so enjoying this. 
<laughs> Anyone else enjoying these? I'm really having fun. At number four, we have Mel B. Mel B's former personal assistant and friend came forward with a ton of scary accusations about this Spice Girl. Gary Mattatayan filed a lawsuit against Mel after she apparently didn't pay him $200,000 while he worked as her hairstylist and PA. Mattatayan was very close with Mel, almost too close. He did everything for her to the point where he had no personal life. He couldn't see his friends or family because he was always working for Mel. He also described incidents where Mel was drunk and violent with her children. Gary said that at her lowest point, Mel would drink three bottles of wine a day and multiple tequila shots, which would make her delusional and paranoid. And at number one on our list, no surprise here, we have Naomi Campbell. Supermodel Naomi Campbell famously threw a Blackberry at her PA, Amanda Brack. Amanda revealed on the Tyra Banks show that Naomi attacked her no less than three times, spat in her face, she cut up her passport and threw it in a swimming pool. And the Blackberry incident? They were in Mexico when Naomi quote, cornered her against a wall over problems with flights and luggage. She got very upset and slammed her Blackberry in the assistant's face. Naomi's hairdresser intervened and saved Amanda. Naomi is apparently very difficult to be around. She also treated another personal assistant in the same manner, Amy Castaldo, who had quit after being subjected to a lot of abuse. Abuse like headbutting, biting, pulling her to the ground by her hair, and calling her a worthless bitch. She also threw a phone at the head of her housekeeper, she caused tens of thousand dollars worth of damage to a yacht belonging to her former lover, and she had a breakdown outside of one of her ex's flats in London at 3.30 in the morning. Starting off our list at number 10, we have Christian Bale. Christian Bale is supposed to be one of the most volatile and difficult people to work with in Hollywood. Bale's former assistant Harrison Chung also wrote a book about his experience working for him, saying that he needed five years of therapy to get past his Bale years. Chung says that he witnessed Bale lecturing fangirls about bothering him to the point where these fangirls started crying. When Bale received a fan letter, he told Chung the fan should be eliminated with a quote, screwdriver thrust through the eyeball into the brain which prevents any screaming. I guess there's definitely a reason why he got the role of American Psycho. Yes, because he's a psycho, get it? And at number 9 we have Lance Armstrong. Right around the time Lance Armstrong was stripped of 7 Tour de France titles by the US anti-doping agency, his former assistant came forward to expose him in a pretty terrible expose for Outside Magazine. Mike Anderson was Lance Armstrong's assistant starting in 2012. He claims that Armstrong returned from Europe with cash stuffed into his pants from races he did under the table. He would avoid world anti-doping agency tests and while he was at Livestrong events, he would mutter things like, I hate these effing things. He also left his wife in a very quote cruel and abrupt fashion. And number 8 we have Anna Wintour. I could not do this list without talking about the most famous example, Anna Wintour, who was exposed by her former assistant Lauren Weisberger. After she graduated from college, Lauren got a job at Vogue magazine as an assistant to the editor-in-chief Anna Wintour. Lauren went on to write a book that resembled her experience working at Vogue and Anna Wintour herself very closely. It was called The Devil Wears Prada and it was a novel about a girl who got an assistant's job at a fashion magazine where she worked for a mean dragon lady editor-in-chief called Miranda Priestly. Later played by Meryl Streep. The book and the movie portrayed the editor in chief as pretty much the worst kind of boss, emotionally abusive, judgmental and demanding. Anne wasn't actually too upset about the book or the movie. She did redecorate her office after the movie came out which was eerily similar to Miranda Priestley's but at the time she said I quote anything that makes fashion entertaining and glamorous and interesting is wonderful for our industry. So I was 100% behind it. And I mean she was played by Meryl Streep which is pretty much like goals. <laughs> In at number 7 we have Courtney Love. Courtney is one of Hollywood's strangest characters. We know this from her bizarre relationship with deceased Nirvana frontman Kurt Cobain. But her former assistant actually sued her in 2012 when she didn't receive payment for the job she'd done. Jessica Labry had a list of strange job criteria as her personal assistant. She worked for $30 an hour, she was going to receive a full ride scholarship to Yale, her job title was assistant and quote forensic research aide, and she was supposed to get the opportunity to work on a Nirvana biopic. But Jessica claims Courtney Love didn't pay her basic wages. She made her work overtime, didn't pay for the Yale scholarship, and even asked her to do illegal tasks like hiring a computer hacker, and she wanted her to pose as a lawyer. Jessica also told the press that while she worked for her, Courtney Love acted with a quote, improper and evil motive amounting to malice or despicable conduct. At number 6 we got Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga's former assistant Jennifer O'Neill claims Lady Gaga was nothing short of a monster. A monster who owed her almost $400,000 in unpaid overtime during her 13 months working for her. Jennifer would do everything for Lady Gaga and she was on duty 24 hours a day. She often wasn't given time off for breaks, meals or even sleep. 
The lawsuit states that her duties included ordering Gaga's meals, making sure her outfits were on hand, the quote promptness of a towel following a shower, and serving as a personal alarm clock. For all of this, Jennifer was paid $75,000 a year. Which is like, uh, that's not enough. Gaga's assistant before O'Neill, Angela Siemni, also claimed that she would sleep and take showers with Lady Gaga because she didn't like being alone. Halfway there now at number 5 we got Tony Robbins. Nine former staffers and followers of Tony Robbins came forward with many accusations of sexual misconduct this past year. Kimberly Stokes who worked as Tony Robbins live in personal assistant had a lot of things to say about Robbins as part of a Buzzfeed expose. She recalls one time where Robbins walked into her bathroom while she was showering and dropped his towel exposing himself. This wasn't the only time Robbins made a pass at her in this way either. To make matters worse, Stokes was a survivor of abuse as a child and Robbins knew that. Another former assistant, Kate Ritas, said that she considered seeing Robbins naked as quote part of her job, but also saw his teachings as life transforming. In at 4 we got Soulja Boy. Soulja Boy was called out by his former assistant Starway for owing him $30,000. Starway said that he worked for Soulja Boy for a total of 5 weeks and during that time period he did everything for him. He lived with him in his house the entire time and took care of his day to day. He also says he shot around 15 music videos for him which he was never paid for. It seems like Soulja took this guy for a bit of a ride. He does have the reputation of being like, I don't know. Just like not having any money. <laughs> He's uploaded photos of fake stacks of money to Instagram for years, and according to his financial advisor, who was also owed money at the time, Soldier hadn't paid him because he only had $1,000 in his bank account. <laughs> Damn, or should I say, ooh, Soldier boy up in it, ooh. Guess he's still not making money off of royalties because nobody likes that song anymore. In at 3 we have Whitney Houston. Whitney's former personal assistant Robin Crawford finally addressed rumors that she and Whitney were in a romantic relationship in a tell all book. A song for you my life with Whitney Houston. Crawford was one of the first people to tell Houston's mother Sissy about her drug habit. And in terms of their romantic relationship, according to Robin they were lovers and Whitney was a lesbian. Everyone close to them knew that there was something going on. Whitney's mother Sissy Houston was against their relationship saying it was unnatural for two women to be that close. In at 2 we got JLo. If you work for Jennifer Lopez, she doesn't let you talk or make eye contact with her. Her new assistant job description is as follows. Must have thick skin. Be graceful under pressure. Resourceful in foreign countries. They must be on call 24-7. Be able to change diapers. Work on little sleep and cook if the butler's away. Oh and this next bit is the icing on the very very saucy cake. If you're JLo's personal assistant, you have to know when it's JLo's snack time, even though she won't say when she's hungry. You're expected to have food waiting for her. Okay. Also, according to JLo's several former assistants, they weren't allowed significant others or vacations. And at number one on our list, we have Mariah Carey. Liana Shakanzarian was Mariah Carey's personal assistant for two years before her employment was wrongfully terminated in 2017. According to a lawsuit she filed and a 32 page complaint, she was on call 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for both Mariah and her former manager. While Liana alleges that Stoppler tackled her to the ground and urinated on her multiple times. And at number 10, we have Kanye West. The girlfriend of Kanye's ex personal assistant, Jazari Allen Lord, exposed Kanye on a podcast with Leah McSweeney and Laura Stiles. According to Lord, as of 2018, Kanye was broke. He wasn't able to pay his staff for 12 weeks because of money troubles and gave them ramen noodles to eat. He paid his top assistant $200 a day. This is quite shocking because Kanye's brand Yeezy was supposed to be worth more than a billion dollars at the time and he definitely has expensive taste. Kanye has come clean about the fact that he's broke, $53 million in debt to be exact. He said, I quote, people don't give money to real artists like me, but would rather open schools in Africa. In at number 9 we got Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber's assistant Taryn Smith took the blame after Justin was caught with an illegal substance at an airport in Australia after a tour. Bieber was given a 12 month good behavior bond while his personal assistant pleaded guilty to two charges of importing marijuana and he paid a fine of $1000. Justin's assistants also always have to be male because if Justin hires a female, the Biebs gets a little uh, flirtatious. Maybe a little handsy, and he strikes up romantic relationships with them. And at number eight, we have Todrick Hall. The former American Idol singer and YouTuber was called out on Twitter by his ex assistant, Thomas McKissick, for being abusive, spending all his money on escorts and strippers instead of paying his creative team, and he also talked trash about Taylor Swift. 
apparently, and was caught on video doing it. He tweeted, I was Todrick Hall's personal assistant for years and I know every detail of his life including deliberate non-payment to people, racism, sexual assault, sexual harassment, online bullying, exploitation, illegal business practices, the list goes on, PS, I never signed an NDA. McKissick also revealed that he and his boyfriend were fired by Todrick Hall for having a relationship with each other instead of continuing their sexual relationships with Hall. Sounds like a great boss. Sign me up. And at number 7 we got Faye Dunaway. Dunaway's former assistant Michael Rocha claims he was paid $1500 a week to be regularly and relentlessly subjected to <laughs> That is a lovely sentence I have to admit. She would humiliate him at work for being a gay man. Rocha says Dunaway called him and other workers quote, little gay people and a little homosexual boy. Rocha tried reporting Dunaway but was fired two weeks later despite not having any disciplinary history. Rocha actually ended up suing Dunaway over discriminatory and unlawful conduct. In at number 6 is Floyd Mayweather. In a tell all book, former executive assistant Tasha Robinson revealed that Mayweather was consumed with his wealth. He lost $15 million after being scammed by a con man. He was always surrounded by paid strippers and gave wads of cash to strangers. When he wasn't training, he would sleep from 6 am to 3 pm, and he also spent two hours, quote, grooming. I don't even spend two hours grooming. <laughs> He also never carried a credit card and almost always had $100,000 in cash on him at all times, stuffed into a duffel bag called Pregnant Duffel by his staff. Also, Mayweather would make his friends sit in the back seat while Pregnant Duffel was in the front with him. At least he takes care of pregnant duffel bags. Does he also feed the duffel bag ice cream and pickles? In at 5 we have Angelina Jolie. Former assistant of Angelina Jolie, Anna Charlotteau, worked at their country estate in the south of France between 2008 and 2010 and apparently Angelina and Brad would fight all the time and then they would spend weeks living apart. Oh yes, I got the tea, I got the tea and I'm just getting started, we only halfway there. She also said that Angelina is an alcoholic. This is especially problematic considering how many kids she has. When Angelina gets too drunk, she locks her six kids in their rooms. Anna actually sued Angelina and Brad for $88,000 for wrongful termination after she took time off for an illness. In at number four, we got Kim Kardashian. Kim fired her longtime personal assistant Stephanie Shepard, who had a lot to reveal about Kim after they parted ways. She shared on Instagram at the time, letting go of a bad friend and self care involves forgiving yourself for your impossible standards and knowing you are worth it. Alright, so what's the tea? Oh, you know I got the tea, boo. Kim Kardashian apparently takes a thousand selfies a day. <laughs> Only a thousand? What? <laughs> Amateur. Stephanie said, I quote, she is so vain that she has staff remove plants or objects if they're in the way of a mirror. While on holiday at Punta Mita in Mexico, Kim took 6,000 selfies on her four day trip. Kim is also, apparently, a slob. She would leave clothes everywhere and Stephanie would have to clean them up. Stephanie also said there would be old food in the refrigerator, the trash would be overflowing in the kitchen, and the bathrooms, no one would go in there. I honestly could do an entire top 10 about secrets revealed about Kim Kardashian's ex assistant alone. Alone. Would you like to see that? Of course you would. I know you would. Let's move on now to number three. We have Jennifer Aniston. According to a few of Aniston's personal assistants, she hates being sweaty and refuses to be dewy on hot days. During takes on set, she would make her assistants fan her or hold ice cubes to her face to keep her body temperature cool. Here is a picture of that happening on set. Like I get it, but also like I feel like that's just like really extra. <laughs> also, apparently, one of her assistants died. Back in 2015, she and Justin Thoreau had a group honeymoon with their best friends at a French Polynesian hotel. Their assistant, Carmel Musgrove, spent all day in the hot sun drinking, then went back to a producer's hotel room to continue partying. Her body was found on a nearby beach. She died of overconsumption of alcohol, cocaine, fatigue, and heat stroke. In at number two, we got Meghan Markle. Meghan's ex assistants have given her a couple of awful nicknames over the years, like Duchess Difficult. Duchess Megan, which means she's always looking out for herself. She's far from the easiest boss to work for, but that also has something to do with the huge burden she bears as the first American and the first black woman in the British royal family. Her schedules are packed with appointments and appearances to make up for a lack of minority representation. Assistance days start at 5 am and they wake up to a stacked inbox of emails from Meghan. But nevertheless, unnamed sources say that the worst job in the palace is working for Meghan Markle, and the high turnover rate supports that claim. Megan has gone through five assistants since 2018 when she joined the royal family. Who knows the reason why these assistants left? Prince Harry doesn't seem to mind. But then again, he also doesn't work for her, so. 
And at number one, we have Harvey Weinstein. No surprise here. Rowena Chu revealed in an emotional New York Times op ed a horrible experience that cost her decades of trauma. Chu was a young woman of color who was working for Weinstein to try and get rid of her student debt. Harvey was the exact opposite, one of the most powerful men in Hollywood who held all the cards. One night in 1998 at the Venice Film Festival, he told her he liked Chinese girls because they were discreet, because I quote, they knew how to keep a secret. He then said, I've never had had a Chinese girl, and you can guess what happened next. Chu says she escaped, but after she confronted Weinstein, she was laughed at by her senior colleagues and told to sign a non disclosure agreement. Her attempts to report Harvey to the police were shut down. Weinstein denied Chu's allegations and said their relationship was consensual, something Chu avidly denies.